Oh shit, the air is bright. Anyway, I completed this thing called Adverse Possession. It's this um, open, notorious, continuous, exclusive ocean. Open, con open, continuous, exclusive, adverse, notorious dominion of the land. It's funny. Think of the United States as um, having a Homestead Act. The Homestead Act is enacted by these judges in the East Coast, following the law of the England, that no time runs against the king. Sort of a uh, something itorami tempta regi. There's another version of it. No time runs against the queen. And so they they can't be deposed if they're crazy of their land and more importantly that their use of the land is what guarantees them the land that it's occupation of the land and its purpose its purpose and it's being used it doesn't have to be occupied it could just be purpose and that translates to people's um, intention that land isn't owned it's 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 earned through its purpose and um, ownership is implying you know possessory interest of something and land isn't something you possess but you occupy and that through that occupation it has to be used to be considered and when you do that you put it into good use which makes it have improvement continuously and that naturally becomes its guardianship or owner and that's how we actually think of titles in property whereas other things like objects physical things they become owned by by belief in the ownership of itself so your assertion of belief is the control that you assert over the object which makes it yours like this is mine you know I believe that because I hold it well adverse possession is the oldest law of all laws comes with murder and all the great ones but it allows us to define what those things are it's the first thing to teach in law school it's quite complex it's usually theoretical anyone willing to try it it's a lot of balls <laughs> I won adverse possession by the law with court ruling on my property on like June 13th, 2021 or something like that. Maybe it was July, I can't remember. It's in the paper. And the same judge, 13 days later, allowed two frivolous copycat suits, which would be considered banned from being done because you would do an, an appeal if you didn't like the r ruling, right? You'd appeal it. And he, he allows these two copycat frivolous suits to be for unlawful enforceable detainer, which I had already beaten everything there is under the fucking rainbow from 1161 to 1174 or 1179 in the CCP, which is a civil code of procedure. Every single number in the middle and every letter in the middle stands for something. It's like first dehuman, dehumanizing, you just have to defend yourself on all those different CCPs, about all these things, and then win, and then still have the same judge allow these frivolous copycat suits to go through. And we appealed it, and we, we, it asked for it to be vacated under 473D, which is of the court's own fruition because of absolute mistake and unclear <laughs> decision making. Uh, any reason at all that the court could find there is within that it is of their duty to fix the problem. <laughs> and the same fucking judge, he goes and he intercepts the cases. It's supposed to go to a new judge, right? You go to the presiding judge. He intercepts them four times. Christmas Eve, Thanksgiving Eve, like... And he, he doesn't even hear us. We say our cat is, like, locked in the house, boarded up inside.
They kill our birds, they kill our pets. <laughs> we didn't lose our spirit yet. <laughs> the sheriff, he arrives at three in the morning to serve a notice, but he doesn't serve it. He just kind of hides it. He doesn't serve it at all. He doesn't give it to us, doesn't tell us anything. He's obviously drunk from on the footage. He then goes and parties at the bottom of the hill with the people who are trying to illegally evict us who are pretending to be owners. You ask yourself, how are they trying to be owners? Well, the bank who didn't have control over it anymore because they over -lended. They lended to the same person who's a straw buyer. Straw buyer means you're like a placeholder for someone who's trying to stay anonymous because they have something fishy they're up to. It's usually involved in a mortgage fraud. My house has another major problem with it. I acquired it through a first possession because it had 15 mortgage frauds on it. And the only person the FBI says to me that isn't a, isn't a suspect is an adverse possessor. Because an adverse possessor has no financial gain in this unless they're one of those people who are adverse possessing to fix and flip. But you guys are um, trying to live there. It's obvious. You're, you're not a suspect of your own you know, case that you've tried to start. Anyway, the um, guy before me, Stephen William Snyder, he he uh, tries to fix and flip the property, subdivide it, but he can't. It's a LS Act constrained. You know what the LS Act is from San Francisco. It constrains the land from from being fixed and flipped by a person unless they're a property owner and they're going to live in it for five to ten years, right? He says in his own plan, because he's being sued for RICO, uh, racketeering charges for for this house and seven others. And he gets all his money from Lending Home Funding Corporation, who lends to him continuously under straw buyers. But they use the same two addresses, one in Wyoming at 30 Gould Street, Sheridan, Wyoming, and one at 1562, or 5662 Lancashire Boulevard, Burbank, North Hollywood, basically, uh, this P.O. Box. And any underwriter for these mortgages would use the same database, especially Lending Home. They're going to use um, Blackwater or something like that. Black Knight. And the Black Knight software will allow you to basically investigate this person's entire like history with money um, extensively to the point where there's no way to get away from them. It's, it's like fucking insurance fraud, you know. You have the same database for it. So if you go like try and say, oh, I got my house robbed twice. The insurance provider, doesn't matter who they are, will know that you're talking shit up your ass because you're fucking... Like, you know, you're you're marked as being someone who already tried to get a claim on like five thousand dollars worth of cameras or something, you know, for some party or something that you said you got robbed at in your own home. If you did that, you'd be bullshitting. They'd know. So the underwriters here have to see that Stephen William Snyder has taken out tons of money because he has seven million dollars floating at that time that he hasn't you know, dealt with. And how does he do that? Well he runs his own company called Private Mon Money Loan. Private Money Loan is a website where you go and apply for loans. And what he does is he takes your data when you've applied for a loan for him, and then he goes and applies for a loan at Lending Home Funding Corporation. So he's applying for a much bigger loan under your identity. So he doesn't have to steal your identity the typical way. He lets you give it to him. right? But what does he really do? Well, he's a fake film producer. He's a fake film producer that hires people to be day, day, day actors, and he makes like shitty spots with like Martin Sheen, famous actors, right? And with that, he then cons other people, producers, into giving him lots more money to make this big old film about his life. And then he pisses them all off, and they all write sort of bad reviews about him on the web on these different, like, um, don't be scammed websites, you know? And they're like, um, Stephen William Schneider, <laughs> or Stephen William Schneider, S-T-E-P-H-E-N, Williams Schneider. Look him up. He's, uh, he's got a lot of shit talking on him. Before I even come along, I don't talk any shit on him. I, I think he's like an underdog kind of fucked up hero um not a hero in a typical sense but like in this whole story he is he's a likable character who i uh <laughs> i don't think i know but i uh would love to have a conversation with him because i've been trying to and he's just avoiding me but he has nothing to lose he, he has a, he's already lost a lot because he lost his case so with me he'd just be making some people happy that he actually could do the right thing Anyway, along comes 
So that my house is involved in this thing. And it's scheme six in his case, in Stephen Williams Schneider's versus Les Cohen, which is one of six or seven cases he has against him at the moment. And he loses that one in default because he can't keep up with it. And just for the record here, that case is in the same courtroom I'm in on the same day. It's the case in front of me. And because I'm just like in my head trying to fucking get ready for my case on video conference, you know, I don't notice that we're in the same courtroom and that I have to serve him. And see, my day in court for dealing with him is a series of steps. And this is a quiet title action I was in that day. And I need to serve him to effectively move forward in my quiet title. Yet he's in that courtroom that day, and he's right before me, and the judge knows that, and she doesn't say anything. But she does say, hey, you're an unlawful detainer, a forcible detainer. That's another type of case where you're going to lose your house because he's they're saying you're, you're broken, or that you haven't paid your rent, one or the other. Each is for a different reason. Forcible is what they said on us, but then they try to manipulate it and say it was unlawful, which is if you haven't paid your rent, but we've never paid rent. Which is why I won, first of all. You can remember, winning here is about telling the truth. So you don't need to make up some shit. You need to tell it how it is. When the judge says to you, Mr. Siding Glance, did you or did you not pay your rent to the, to the owners or to the bank? And you go, fuck no, I did not. I did not pay the fucking anybody. I fucking have to pay them. It's my fucking house. See? A ruling was in my favor. He was pissed off, but. So I went to file for a mistrial anyway, just because he's a dick. And he couldn't figure out who the fucking plaintiffs really were. So he confused the plaintiffs in the description of the, of the judgment, yet it said still said for the plaintiff, for the defendants and against the plaintiffs. Which he, when I say he couldn't figure it out, meaning that they swapped their interests in the middle, the uh, fake owners and fake owners, because they were trying to commit bankruptcy fraud along the way. Because they need to hide the fact that they acquired this asset um, during the time frame that they're speaking about because they don't want to be caught for the fact that they have these assets and that they're planning to hustle them in the first place because they're in attempted bankruptcy for continued um, refusal to pay employment insurance uh, compensation fund, which is the state of California's employment insurance department and uh, provider of over $200,000 worth of employment insurance. Now coming to like a million dollars worth of debt. And they lost the case for not paying it, which they then were like, no, that's not true. We couldn't, we, that's not possible. We're not gonna pay it. <laughs> so the state's like, fuck you, yeah, you are. They take them to collections. And so a collections bill can turn into a fraud case if it's intent. And they haven't, have been cornered like that yet but but I come along and I say hey look at all this going on to Northern California collections I can show you how that is fraud and they'll help you and they say oh great thank you I'll do that meanwhile I get physically attacked my house gets emptied I end up on the street 500 days 600 days now 700 days or something I'm in this hotel for the last nine months thank god Take me a while to get my feet, my bearings straight. I lose my wife to basically her going insane, turning into this religious freak. And um, I love her with all my heart, but it's been 11 months now. And uh, I haven't heard from her even once. I, I know her father had a lot to do with it. He's a mortgage fraud specialist, meaning he actually, you know, they say bootstrapping it. So immigrants have it hard. They have to really... They have a lot of gumption. They'll make it. He committed fraud against his own people. He like, and my wife's great, but her father, he's a devil. He literally like was a loan refinance specialist and spent 365 days of 2017 or 18 in jail. He didn't tell anybody his family that he was there. I found out about it by reading the article while looking up her name. I found it one day. Unbelievable. The word is that he's trying to get her to be a real estate broker for her, for him. I hope not, because that would put her in a lot of danger, because he's not allowed to practice real estate of any kind. Kind of like Trump, you know? Anyway, he's from Chile. 
I guess if you're from Chile, though, you probably were forced to work for Pinochet, because that's what, that's what I learned. So it sounds like people that were oppressed already, you know. I want to go home. So they, I want to kick this out of the house. Sure, go appeal it. Judge Bird just keeps blocking all these appeals. They're supposed to go to the judges. I finally find out, like a week ago. From using GPT to analyze databases of, of my case register of actions that it had cases misfiled on purpose that they misfiled the a default that they acquired by using an address that didn't exist so they could send the notice to a house that doesn't exist get a default use that file it in the other case and then get a collapse of it that's how they use the two frivolous copycats to their advantage they weren't really concerned about going to a court on those two they were going to default one of them anyway and use it to collapse both and, and never have the time frame to do anything about it and that's exactly what they did step by step then my vacates were denied for reasons that were so ridiculous such as this vacate is 15 pages instead of 20 instead of um you know less than 21 it had to be less than 21 and then they argued any point they can to get it thrown out meanwhile i have like 75 reasons why it should not be thrown out and why it needs to be in my favor for it to be vacated the vacate is under any reason at all that justice could not be applied properly because due process is the most important thing right but George Bird again doesn't give a shit about due process because he's well let's just lay my opinion out of it for now because of another whatever George Bird Birdian bullshit jump to like I'll skip all the shit in the middle just for the hell of it but I did spend two years on the street my wife goes insane. We lose our cat permanently. Everything we own. Not a single photo left. Of this computer. No clothes left from it. No identity, you know, from like what you develop. I lose a million three property. Now it's worth two four. And then I'll a good six hundred to seven hundred thousand dollars worth of shit that I've collected since I was a kid. I've been raped once while I was trying to get off the street. Been beaten several times. Terrified about a lot of shit that it shouldn't be. I'm lonely. <laughs> I want my house back. Not the equity, at least. But here's what happens. I post the entire case that I finally got on the internet because I was able to get the audio recording to transfer over, which puts a filter so it like, makes it sound like feedback and infinitely if you try to record the court's transcription software thingy. I finally got to work with Ableton. Post it online. It's been six months, and I get an email yesterday. A person who goes, you were um, served supposedly by this guy Panos Penyon. Uh huh. I look at your video and I see this guy, but I look at my video from Ring and I see this guy, and they're not the same guy. And that name's pretty unique. Server number is the same. But you know what that means, right? It means. They committed fraud. Not the guy who emailed me, Panos Panion. Which means service has not been provided. If service is not provided, you have not committed the first step in the due process. Service must be accurate. Occupied. It's a reference to Alphaville. Occupied. Some of the Godard's voice is really. He died. He fucking killed himself. You know that? Fucking hero. Two in a row. I have some shitty heroes I pick. Two in a row had to fucking kill themselves. Hunter S. Thompson. Now fucking Godard. Jesus Christ. 
you know, I've never felt anything about suicide before, but in the last year there's been like two times where I could understand why you do it. Three times, because once it was for someone else I understood, but those two times well, I could understand internally. Alright, I hope this makes a little bit more sense. I need a doctor. It doesn't have to be a real doctor. <laughs> I guess you need a therapist for court to apply to this situation. I was actually intending to never bring that concept into this, but I'm so happy to hear that you're a therapist. Oh, yeah. I'm about to lose the one I have because it's with this this um, homeless shelter, and she's been wonderful. It's been really interesting to get to know somebody new that I actually allowed my, into my life like that, but she comes with this program, and when it ends... I need to find somebody new, and that was starting to terrify me, and if anything at all, this would be really helpful for me to be able to to relate to someone I know who can kind of bull check me on my bullshit, because that's the hardest part about, like, the owning up to your, your own flaws is not just the historical thing, like, you, you know, a therapist isn't here to hear me out on my facts, it's to hear me on how I'm perceiving the world and how I can persistently endure it. these difficulties and change to encounter a better life and maybe deal with who I am. So I don't lie to myself, you know? I'm not, but I can contextualize all day and it's not going to change me. So the therapy is like something I understand is something that is really helpful because it kind of checks that. And I, I think you know me, <laughs> believe it or not. I've changed a lot. I'll be the most honest person I know because I fight fraud. I fought fraud for five years. And that's all I believe in. No, no willful intimidation allowed. The case is going to have a big settlement. It's going to take some time, but not that much time. I'm going to pay you generously for any of your services if you allow it to be on a, a credit. I promise. I promise. There you go. Love you. Rap. Glad you're married. That's really cool. When I heard that, and I finally checkmated my my what the fuck? I just how did I not see that? I didn't understand that. I mean, I understood it the second I saw it. Like my blinders were on first. Just wanted to extend to you both, very very uh, hello and welcome, and glad that you're uh, together. It sounds awesome, because I know how awesome it is for me. What I had, and that's all I'd want out of my own friends is people who I could share that kind of quality of life with. So I look forward to meeting you both. And uh, my name's Eric Sideglance. Thank you, Claudia. Ciao.